back to the Bitcoin conference, um, we saw the independent city of Prospera um, announced that they're going to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender, which is like an autonomous zone within Honduras. And then also in Portugal, there was an island that's a similar kind of autonomous zone. Um, do you have any thoughts about uh, these developments? No, um, and probably not what you want to hear uh, when we're trying to get some content for the show. But you know, I think Mexico also said they were going to um, you know, put a bill, you know, put a bill through. You know, uh, I think we need some more countries uh, bigger than small islands. Um, I think the El Salvador experiment so far, tell you what, nothing hugely went wrong, which I think that's what the whole world was waiting for, right? For this thing to collapse. Uh, so, so far, so good there. It's a little weird as a Bitcoiner where on one hand, it were, it's all about, let's say, uh, generally all about libertarian ideas, small government, sovereign, free people. And uh, Bukele is our Bitcoin hero and his tweets are fire. Uh, but then on the flip side, you kind of like, you, you, you either ignore or, or sort of pretend to ignore you know, article after article where he's either sort of stripping away the rights of the Supreme Court or he's taking like really, really draconian measures on gang violence, which it's interesting to see what Bitcoiners are willing to tolerate in the name of Bitcoin. Um, and I don't, I don't know where the line is. You know, it's I don't necessarily love draconian measures, but I don't know. I probably hate gang violence more, right? Um, and you know, for a guy, the, the, when 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 option A would have been to reinstate a local national currency that he could have controlled, right? He could control the monetary policy. He could have inflated it when he needed to, could have done all kinds of things and really consolidated power away from the dollar and, and just towards him in general. When instead he gave his people a device that no matter what he wants to do, he can't unwind that. He, he, he can say, he can turn off the internet, right? And the, you know, the satellites beaming down the chain or mesh. There, there's ways for these people to, to continue no matter what, no matter how draconian he chooses to be. So that's sort of a, an interesting, you know, opposite of, opposite of sides where he does some things as a politician that I think a lot of people would have uh, hesitation if they knew it was going to happen ahead of time. But then on the flip side, you give people Bitcoin and, you know, that's freedom and you can't, you can't unwind that. That is, that is, he's giving away a power that he can never take back. So it's, it's interesting to watch. I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see more countries like that dabble in Bitcoin, if not fully accept it. Um, I'd rather see that than situations like Russia, even though Russia's economy is probably far too big to be able to jump to Bitcoin, but I'd rather see I'd rather see countries just moving towards it because it's a better monetary system than countries um, who just want to avoid sanctions. Uh, I'm not saying I'm pro or against sanctions, but I just think that that type of maneuvering will bring the ire of, of the United States government um, in a way that we as Bitcoiners just don't want to deal with. So the sort of the, the the slow and steady rise from sort of underneath is probably our best our best bet. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you about the slow and steady. I mean, when it comes to Madeira, it's it's about things like quarter of a million people in Madeira or something around that. So it's like a it's more than Prospera, and it's like its own sort of you know, uh, well, it's part part. It's like a Portuguese island, but yeah, it's kind of its own running thing. So it's it's a little bit better than uh, just like a insignificant city, but um, but yeah, it definitely feels like we're moving slightly with the countries. But that is potentially a good thing when it comes to El Salvador as well. I think that um, what you said is is interesting because I think also. Uh, it's like a risky move, but the upside is so much bigger for for um, Bukele doing it than like just getting his own currency. Because the problem with his own currency is the economy is not really strong enough for a shit ton of debt. And so he probably wasn't going to bring much investment into the country. But by going with Bitcoin, suddenly you've got external foreign investment like from businesses. You've got people wanting to migrate there that never did in the first place. So he's kind of like rebuilding his country by taking a ballsy move. So um, the upside is ginormous, I uh, I figure, from that. Um, yeah, I'm with you. But yeah, it's uh, and then you had, I think we had Shopify, wasn't it as well? Uh, like Shopify and some other company or something. I think are going to be doing. Bitcoin. Well, that, yeah, the, I forget the list that Jack Mahler um, spit out, but a shit ton of companies that are now going to accept it. That and then, and then in El Salvador, right? It was um, 
Starbucks and McDonald's and it's, it's almost like these large chains. I mean, when I say large, that they're, they're huge. That in many ways is probably even better than nation states than small nation states, right? At the point where, you know, similar like Fidelity, I mean, they've been mining Bitcoin for however many years, um, they're in. And, and to have a sort of a company like that, they're gonna be able to navigate the regulations and, and they're gonna be, or, or Coinbase going public, right? All of those type of things, like Coinbase is not going to get shut down. Like the United States government is very unlikely to shut down a public company at this point. Um, so th things like that, I think are probably better signs and better in the long run than even El Salvador um, sort of accepting it, right? The, the day that, like if, the day that Starbucks and McDonald's does the math on just how much they're paying in processor fees, and how much it costs to sort of move their money internationally, if they can figure out a way where by, let's say, leveraging Strike, you know, or, or Open Node, and just that's how you buy, right? So during the pandemic, we all sort of migrated over to this. Oh, yeah, you just use the QR code. Well, if the QR code was just loading up your McDonald's app that was connected to Strike, and that was all Bitcoin behind the scenes, on our side, it was dollars, right? Um, but behind the scenes, it was just that Bitcoin technology. And now their fees go from whatever it is, 3% to no percent. That I can see making sense real fast for a company that big, because that dollar amount adds up huge. Now, all of a sudden, they're willing to commit some amount of that money that they would save to lobbyists, to work with local governments, to work with national governments, right, to put forward their, their we're going to make money agenda. And with what little I know about history, the we want to make money agenda seems to do pretty well. Yeah, you're right. Normally selfish interests uh, from big businesses seems to actually make things happen. It's a shame because I, I think Bitcoin, uh, there's a lot of power that can be had for small businesses, small businesses and communities to kind of fight back against bigger corporations. But at the end of the day, as you say, um, that's being a bit dream worldy, I suppose. Not you, did, you didn't say that, but that's my, my opinion on it. I, I don't know if you guys saw, but in the UK... Um, the uh, one I think our chancellor Rishi Sunak is his name um, came out and said he wanted the UK to be like a you know head of crypto development or whatever and like a crypto friendly country uh, and so our royal mint is going to be releasing an NFT. <laughs> This is like a this is like a comedy sketch when I saw this. I thought it was a joke, right? Because I said he came out and said it, and then like I saw this tweet, I thought, oh, it's just a joke parody page. It's not a joke parody page. It was legit. Like he came out and said, you know nothing to do with like taxes on like I, maybe that will come right but it was this whole thing like we're going to be like you know the best nation for crypto and businesses and all this stuff and then it was like so the royal mint is releasing an nft um which that sounds uh, like the babylon b yeah it's uh well i just thought you know getting rug pulled by like uh the royal mint is uh, like the queen rug pulling you is probably going to be like the funniest thing that's happened this year if they manage to do the nft uh, I, mean, I don't, I don't, NFTs are hot right now. And pe listen, people flip sneakers, right? So what the fuck do I know? But with NFTs, because those are the questions that I get from my friends a lot right now. And what I don't understand, let, let's take, let's take digital art or digital things. Let, let's not use NFTs to represent like ownership of houses. That stuff makes me even more confused because Ricardo buys my car from me. And so, right, we update the blockchain and the NFT moves from me to him. And now you can all verify that he's the owner of it. But I just don't give him my fucking keys because the keys are in the real world and this shit is on a blockchain. And so now what, right? Like now what? So we're going to go to the DMV and someone, either the DMV or a lawyer, is going to make a legal decision and either unwind it or, or, or they're going to have the ability to update the blockchain at which point you have a centralized authority who can update the fucking blockchain at which point well why decentralize it in the first place that's way too expensive with digital art let's just say it's uh, nba cards right larry bird larry bird gifts i'm in sounds great my kid will probably think it's amazing he'll have a digital you know, it's some sort of digital card book and you change the page and the shit changes. It'll be awesome. That part doesn't confuse me. The part that confuses me is why do we need 
thousands and thousands of nodes to in a decentralized manner verify the fact that my six-year-old owns this fucking car. Why not just let NBA run an Amazon you know, SQL server on AWS? They can back it up once a week, whatever they need to. That way it's super fast, super cheap. They can have a great UX. They can make changes when they want. Right? What, that's the part I can never explain to people or I can never have them explain to me. Why does the NBA NFT, why can't NBA own? Or, or for art, like Sotheby's. I would trust Sotheby's to let me know if Lawrence owns the piece of punk or if I own the piece of punk. Um, but I, I say that. Meanwhile, I'm watching this shit go up in price and go up in uh, sort of popularity and the network effects. So fuck it. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Is what I start to realize. Like, you know, like I also don't know how to flip sneakers. But meanwhile, people are doing it. They've been doing it for years. And so fuck it. What do I know? I, I feel your pain, man. I bought an NFT like uh, I think it was like a couple of weeks back. So I was like, I've, I've been looking because I hate, I don't get it. So like, I was like, yeah, I just didn't get it. So I was like, uh, I'm going to like try and get it. So I started talking to people I know and I was like, so why do I want this? And it was like, well, you can just like sell it for more. And I'm like, okay, uh, is there anything uh, else like, I can do? Whatever. Like, I, why do I? And then like, there's this one that was like a game and you buy like a character. Or, I don't know. So I bought this NFT, but it seems to have only gone down in price. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. Um, um, but I did it. So I'm now part of the gang. Um, I have one. Um, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I wonder like the next thing really will be when, when one coin NFT, right? Like, cause you know, one coin is basically just a, a central, uh, like Excel spreadsheet that, um, that there's just it's like holds people's balances or whatever um so yeah one coin nfts will probably be next it sounds like exactly what you described with the nba uh databases but you're right you're right like it's like uh, i remember it was like an andreas antonopoulos video that i first watched when i was like switching from crypto to bitcoin in like early 2019 or something and um yeah i remember him basically saying like uh if you can just replace like the word blockchain with like database and it still makes complete sense then there's like literally no point in doing it like this is a bunch of waste of time and it's just a bunch of crap basically i mean he didn't say and that in fact, that's <laughs> so, the thing yeah. when, you, when you hear when you hear the concept that maybe some of these projects are trying to solve you're like no that's a good idea like i, I see what you're saying we should make real estate transactions far uh, with much less friction i'm in i don't know why there's a token right i don't know what that has to do with anything or i don't know why I, you know, wh why we need it on a decentralized ledger feels like we could have done this a more simple way. That's where I always land, where a lot of the ideas seem promising um, and in good faith, I think. You know, I, I, it feels like sort of that ICO scamminess is, is gone, although it could just be that I don't pay attention anymore. Um, but I, just, I always end up coming to the point of like, that sounds super cool, but so why is there a token? Or that sounds super cool, but so why is it decentralized, you know? And I don't think, I don't think a lot of people understand, you know, if you're gonna decentralize something, you're making a technical choice. It's a fine choice, right? And there's trade-offs. In the same way that I could put a security system for my house that was, I covered my house in an iron dome. And I dug a moat around the house. It would be highly secure. It would just be really hard to use my house, but it would be one of the most secure things ever. That trade-off for me, isn't worth it. And so I, I don't, I don't have an iron dome and a moat around my house. That's why I sort of describe not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> anymore. That's why I describe, especially to, to new people, like, hold on, do you understand like what, you, like why decentralized, you know, with Bitcoin, it's the key fucking point. Like it being decentralized is the thing that makes it relevant. You start looking at some of these other projects, you're like, well, hold on. what if the Bugs Bunny NFTs weren't decentralized. What if technically China could come in and like hijack the nation and get away with my Bugs Bunny NFT? Yeah. Okay. Fuck it. You know? Yeah. Well, you brought up an interesting point with um, like McDonald's, for instance, realizing how much they could save in fees and allocating some of those savings to lobbying Congress or whatever. Um, do you think that Coin Center, I know they get a lot of, uh, Bitcoiners poking fun at them, but Coin Center, it seems it's like a lobby that is in the interest of crypto users. Uh, do you think that they're going to defend like private wallets and stuff? Like we just saw Europe say that you can no longer withdraw to a, a private wallet like on your phone without okay. KYCing it first. Uh, to me, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of Bitcoin. Do you think that the US having a lobby like Coin Center 
will be sufficient to protect Bitcoiners from encroachments on the rights. Like I think that in many, many times, an enemy of my enemy sort of situation is my friend. I think um, Coin Center is at least carrying the torch of education, even if that includes education on things like proof of stake. Um, I have seen, you know, some of the, uh, what are they called, uh, interviews, well, the things that we see in Washington when they're they're asking questions. Uh, what the hell is that called? The commissions or whatever they have. Uh, I don't know. Well, somebody edit, figure that out and we can edit the word in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, I always want those to be good, but then you see the people that are involved and then the questions that get asked, it, it really doesn't seem like they're trying to, to get to the truth seems like something else is going on. And so I think places like Coin Center have um, their jobs cut out for them. Meanwhile, there's other, um, I know that um, it might be called the American Standard, uh, CJ Wilson and Gary Leland and Amanda and um, Jimmy Song, they, they worked on a book. I wish, I wish I knew what it was. I, I, I think my dad took it. Anyway, the book is to teach staffers in government about Bitcoin, right? So sort of starting at that low level, or if you can get these people to understand, they can help educate people above them. And then also there's another group that recently got kicked off, I think this year called the SATS Center, and they are a Bitcoin specific um, lobbyist group. So I'm happy that Coin Center exists, and I'm happy to see that more people are sort of joining the fight and especially with a bitcoin specific slant go bitcoin ooh, ooh. yeah i mean we nailed it has this been the best interview you guys have ever done i think i mean basically pretty damn good pretty it's gotta be good. about 10 to 15 times better than any other interview we've ever done and ever yeah. will do i think it's fair I mean, to say right i mean for just a friend of thomas you guys must be like holy fucking shit how does he know this guy mind blown yeah, <laughs> yeah. I gotta oh, say, so man. I gotta an say, an hour of recording. Let's get this down to fifteen minutes and make me sound great. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> you say, like one word. It's like, hi there, my hello. I think Bitcoin very bad. Good. <laughs> just chop it up. Yeah. Well, we can do that for you if you want to hatch your job. It. No, it's um, it's been awesome to have you on, man. It's been great. Um, is there anything you want to like say I, anything I, about like where people can find like about Bay Bitcoin Meetup or anything about yourself you want to plug before you head out? Yeah. Uh, I mean, why not? So you can find me, I'm Billy MacDo on Twitter and Telegram and everything else. Um, you can find btcbitcoiners.com or bayareabitcoiners.com. Um, sorry, it's bayareabitcoiners.com is the website. And then online, we're BTC Bitcoiners on Twitter. Uh, so that's where you can find the meetup group we have every other week in San Francisco. And then once a month, we do it in the North Bay, the East Bay, the Peninsula, the South Bay, and Santa Cruz. So people who are outside the city have a have something going on once a month and then keep your eye out for a project that me and some friends are working on right now called btcmeetups.com we're basically creating meetup for bitcoin only um every local meetup will have their own micro site uh where they can have their events they can have a blog about us faqs and then all those events will fall into the main the main site's landing page so if you're traveling to tampa you can go to btcmeetups.com, go to events, search for Florida. Is there anything going on in Tampa? And find find local meetups that way. We're trying to encourage more, more local meetups um, just because we think they're important. So eyes peeled for that, you guys. Eyes peeled. I'll come back on the show when we launch it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like I, I wish we'd, we said, we'd asked more about it. But yeah, you can come back on for uh, round two. Ding, ding, ding. Like uh, whenever that comes out, I'll be cool. Um, and I, I, can, I, can, I hope that I become a regular guest. <laughs> And people are like, who is he? We're like, I don't know. He's just fun to talk to. I don't even think he works in Bitcoin. <laughs> it's just like the, like the stig or something, you know, just coming yeah, as like exactly. a random, random special co-host. But yeah, no, of course, man, it was, it was, it was awesome having you on board. I and mean, yeah, it'd be cool to, to hear more about that once it's launched. Cause hopefully I can get some like uh, London based uh, meetups and England based meetups onto it as well, uh, which would be cool. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on and, and everyone who's listened. We appreciate you listening. Um, we hope you enjoyed uh, listening to us all talk. Uh, and we hope that you have a wonderful uh, day, month, week, month, year, uh, and keep loving life, keep being awesome, and most of all, keep buying Bitcoin. Take care. Cash, Bitcoin cash. Was this not a Bitcoin cash show? <laughs> Shit. Uh, <that'd> be a <laughs>